are you a coffee drinker? Like, are you one of those die hard, gotta have a cup of coffee in the morning before you talk to anybody type person? Well, if that's you, you want to stick around for today's stock of the day. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Kamari Ellis. Many people call me the Finance Rebel. I've been in the financial services industry for over 20 years as an accountant, investment analyst, portfolio manager, and overall confidant to many, many clients. Today, we're going to talk about our stock of the day in our investment series called Invest in What You Know. This is episode two. So today, you want to guess what the stock is? Well, it's a company that has over 300,000 employees. It's worth over $117 billion, That's right, billion dollars with a B. If you haven't guessed it by now, I'll tell you, it's Starbucks. That's right. Good old Starbucks from out there in Seattle was started back in 1971 by Howard Schultz. Schultz took over the company from previous owners, but it has a very interesting story. Howard went on a trip to Italy, got to experience a lot of the Italian bistros where they serve espresso, came back with that idea, brought it back to Seattle, and said, we have to implement this here. And so from that, meager beginnings from a small trip, they made that into a company that is grossing over $24 billion in revenue and bringing home profits of $4.5 billion a year. It's pretty impressive. All right. But it's not really about the money with Starbucks. It's more so about the story. The story, again, is phenomenal. How many people go into Starbucks every day to drink coffee? I know quite a few. Part of the reason why I was motivated to do this video was because... I know so many people that go to Starbucks every day, buy coffee, and don't own the stock. So they're almost like coffee addicts or Starbucks addicts. They spend at least five bucks a day at Starbucks. They get absolutely nothing out of it. So I say, hey, how about we flip that equation? You can still go buy your, your Starbucks, but how about we also buy the stock too? So right, we can buy the coffee and the stock, right? Or your latte or one of your Danishes to pound cakes. But guess what? I'm guilty too. I go there quite often myself. Not every day though. Um, I still brew at home from time to time. But listen, no shade. If you go to Starbucks every day and you can afford it, that's all right with me. So a quick disclaimer before we even really get even deeper into Starbucks. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. Again, past performance is not an indicator of future results. I don't want anybody saying Kamari told me to buy the stocks. We are talking about Starbucks for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, I want to talk about something. Starbucks. Starbucks reward members. There's 16 million of them. I mean, that's a lot. That's like more than a cult following. So we know Starbucks is pretty well respected. Like I said a minute ago, people go there every day. And they figured out how to keep people coming back. Many times they come back for the ambiance, the overall experience. And actually, that's one of their brand points, right? When you go back and you look at their annual report, one of their major keys of things that they're working on is customer experience. So any real business, any major business always has a key or is always worried about or concerned about customer experience. That's a major portion of your brand. And that's what they have in their annual report. And anytime you are looking to analyze any stock, you should always look at the annual report. All right. So that's just a quick tip for you um, real quick. So a couple other quick facts about Starbucks. Starbucks has been a Fortune magazine admired company since 2002. It's now 2019. So they've been on that list running for 17 years straight. That's very impressive. So I told you a minute ago that Starbucks is a $24 billion company in terms of revenue. Like I told in the intro, it's a $117 billion company. That's what it's worth overall in the market right now. Now, I'm pulling from some notes. They did $24.7 billion in revenue in the uh, fiscal year of 2018. They had profit of $4.5 billion. So when everything's said and done, 
taxes are paid, employees are paid, insurance is paid. What they got to put into their pocket was $4.5 billion. Now, when you look at that, that's roughly about an 18% profit margin, okay? So you figure if they put out 100 bucks, they'll get back $118. So that's how you kind of think about the percentages like that. It's not bad. Starbucks is definitely a capital-intensive company, locations, equipment, employees. So they, they need all those things to have a really successful operation. So I get it. I get it. They're going to spend money to make money. Now, after looking at their balance sheet, I was really interested. All right. So this year they have about $8 billion in cash just sitting on their balance sheet. Um, it's definitely an increase from last year when they had about $2.4, $2.5 billion sitting on their, on their balance sheet. So they have that much money sitting in the bank. But when you look at the overall balance sheet, it's pretty interesting. They actually have a negative, for personal people, a negative net worth. Um, you might say it's a neg negative equity position. Um, so basically their assets are, the, so when you figure out equity, it's assets minus liabilities equals net worth or equity. So they have more liabilities than they actually have assets. Usually we don't like that. But it appears that a lot of their money, because they had profits from last year, so that goes into their cash position, and they took on more loans, more debt. They about doubled that, all right? So it went from about $4 billion to about $9 billion. So that's what's kind of throwing a monkey wrench and everything. But it looks like they did all that to expand operations worldwide, especially China. Again, another major key on the annual statement was to accelerate growth in China. So that's telling you something, accelerate growth in China. Now, right now, it's August 29th. We are in the midst of a trade war. The United States is in the midst of a trade war with China. Things are going to throw a little monkey wrench into things, but they're still doing really, really well. As a matter of fact, Starbucks just had a quarterly report, their third quarter report, uh, about a month ago. And so they opened up about 428 stores. Uh, roughly 40% of those were in China. So you're talking about... <clears throat> so last year, and excuse me, in the last quarter, right? Starbucks, third quarter, they opened up about 448 stores globally. All right, out of all those stores, 40% of those stores were opened up in China. So you're looking at a little over 200 plus stores opened up in China. So that's almost 50% of their growth. I know it's 40%, but it's a large portion of their growth and their overall growth plan. And so you can see how in the annual report where they listed that, and then now um, in, their, in their rollout plan and how they're executing, they're, they're showing that. So they're expecting more growth from China because let's face it, China is a major driving force in the world economy now. This isn't 30, 40, or 50 years ago where the United States was the only game in town. China now is a major player on the block, and you have to respect them at all costs. So right now, since the beginning of this year, Starbucks stock is up over 50%. Now, if you look at that versus the overall market, the S&P 500, which is up about 17%. So Starbucks is actually beating the market. Comparing the stock price to what's going on to the general market is also a good indicator to see if the, the stock is going up just because the market's going up or is it going up because the company is really performing. So when you look at Starbucks, it's a really run comp really well run company. All right. They have brand loyalty. They have an expansion plan. Um, they're very corporately they're very corporately responsible or socially responsible. Um, I see the stock going to continue to do well in the long run. All right, remember for the stock of the days and the invest in what you know series, I'm only talking about things that have a, a a great prospect of doing well over a 10 year time span. Again, remember, past performance is no indicator of future results. These conversations are for entertainment and educational purposes only. I don't want anybody saying Kamari said to buy the stock. All right. We're just having fun with this. And just want to help encourage people to look at stock investing for the long term. So I like I like Starbucks. 
Um, like I said, I go there a lot. They have great service, usually. I know they've had a couple of hiccups. They've definitely addressed those um, over the last year or two. And it looks like they are looking to move forward and grow faster. So I, I, I think Starbucks is something that everybody uses, something that everybody sees. Um, it's something that could possibly help you make some money over the long run. So tell me, do you go to Starbucks? Do you own Starbucks stock? If you don't, it's time to buy it. If you want to open up a broker's account and start investing, click the link in the, click the, link in the bio below. I am going to recommend that everybody use the Robinhood app. It is an affiliate program. I get a share, but guess what? You get a share also. So we all get a share. So as you use it, you get utilage out of it, you get value out of these videos, you get a free share of stock, I get a free share of stock. I always want to be transparent about any of the things that I offer out to the public. One of the other things that I found interesting about Starbucks is that when you look at the insiders, basically the people who are key to the organization, who are heavy hitters in the organization, over the last year, they've been buying the stock. So that tells me they have skin in the game. That tells me that they believe in the company and they believe the company is going to continue to make money. So that's another good indicator as well. It's not everything, but when you add everything and you're baking this cake called investing, investing in stocks, you have various ingredients. I would say insider holdings, insider transactions is one of those important pieces of the pie. So until the next time, until the next stock of the day, I'll see you soon. Stay happy and keep investing. Kamari Ellis out.